Today's learners live in an age of unforeseen challenges. Education can be a pathway for personal transformation, and it has the power to lead to the societal and global changes we need to build a just, sustainable, and peaceful future for all. But to do this, education itself has to transform, so everyone can learn the knowledge, skills, and values to care for each other and act for the planet. Welcome to the fifth UNESCO Forum on Transformative Education for Sustainable Development, Global Citizenship, Health, and Well-Being. A global discussion on where we stand on realizing transformative education. Together, we can build a better future. Hello everyone, I'm Alexander Leich, the Chief of the Section of Education for Sustainable Development at UNESCO, and I will be one of the co-moderators of this opening session. Hi, uh, I'm Chong Min Nam, Head of Office of Research and Development at APSEU, and I'm the co-moderator of this opening session. And we have Alexander Luck Le uh, uh, from uh, UNESCO. He's the uh, Chief of Education for Sustainable Development section, and he'll be co-moderating uh, uh, this opening session. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to everyone to the fifth UNESCO Forum on Transformative Education for Sustainable Development, Global Citizenship, Health and Wellbeing. The UNESCO Forum series began in 2013 in Bangkok, and this fifth edition is live streamed from Seoul. It is co-organized by UNESCO and the Asia Pacific Center of Education for International Understanding, APSEU, and it is hosted by the Ministries of Education and Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Korea. Welcome to the fifth uh, UNESCO Forum on Transformative Education for Sustainable Development, Global Citizenship, Health and Wellbeing. Uh, this fifth edition will discuss where we stand with the implementation of transformative education. Unfortunately, uh, the persistent pandemic does not allow us to get together as we used to. However, around 2000s of education partners from all over the world are connected to this event. Before we move on to the opening remarks, I would like to remind you that all sessions are available in four languages, English, French, Spanish, and Korean, either on the online platform or on YouTube. And now I would like to invite Ms. Stefania Giannini, the Assistant Director General for Education of UNESCO, to deliver her opening remarks. Excellencies, Deputy Prime Minister and Ministers of Education Republic of Korea, Director General, Public Diplomacy and Cultural Affairs uh, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Director of APC. Greetings from Paris to all. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the fifth UNESCO Forum on Transformative Education for Sustainable Development, Global Cities, Health and Wellbeing. We recently celebrated, as you know, UNESCO's 75th birthday. This occasion served to remind us that from the foundation of this organization upon the rubble of the Second World War, education was understood to be crucial to rebuilding a peaceful world and transforming society for the better. Today, humanity faces new challenges, we know the escalating climate crisis, the rise of hate speech and violent ideologies, mass bio biodiversity loss and the global pandemic that has affected at the peak of the pandemic, as you remember, 1.6 billion almost learners worldwide. Education must prepare learners to navigate uncertain futures and help them create a more peaceful, just and sustainable world. But to do this, education itself but must be changed, must be transformed. UNESCO has called for a new social contract on education in our recent landmark report on the futures of education. The social contract calls for urgent rebalancing of our relationships with each other, with nature and with technology. 
for pedagogies of collaboration, new pedagogies of collaboration, for cooperation and solidarity, new forms of solidarity that treasure and sustain diversity and pluralism. Education must be truly transformative. It must give us the knowledge, the skills, values and ability to transform ourselves. In turn, we will transform society, of course. Six years after the adoption of SDG 4, a commitment to inclusive quality education for all, we take stock. What do we mean by quality? What needs to change in our education systems to really reach our 2030 goals? Well, we need to learn to read and write, of course, but also to learn collaboration, empathy, complex problem solving, connection to other human beings and nature. And to do this, we need students who are happy and healthy. Simple like this. This is why Sustainable Development Goal Target 4.7, which aims to help us transform the world through education, is uh, integral to meeting all the SDGs. It's crucial to do that. Today we launched the results of a global survey of almost 60,000 teachers conducted by UNESCO and Education International. Let me say something about that. The teachers have their say, report, this is the title, re shows that, that while most teachers are motivated, quite engaged, a quarter still don't feel re ready to teach terms related to target 4.7 concerning uh, the they feel least confident teaching uh, the social emotional elements. Well, UNESCO's programs on education for sustainable development, global citizenship, education and education for health and well-being are key to changing this framework. The holistic vision of the vital competencies and content are being called for by young people around the world. We heard this loud and clear message most recently at COP26 and in the lead up at the pre-COP Youth Summit. They want transformative education, which allows people of any gender class to raise, to contribute to the creation of a better world. Since our last forum, there has been increased global acknowledgement of the key role of Target 4.7, a major milestone. Let me call the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development in Berlin, the first global ministers conference and a multi-stakeholder forum addressing hate speech through education and the launch of the foundation of life and love campaign on comprehensive sexuality education. This fifth UNESCO forum will allow us to expand and connect the global community working on transformative education, to share good practices, to analyze the gaps and how to measure success. I thank, I deeply thank the ministries of education and foreign affairs of the Republic of Korea for your generous support of this forum and my sincere gratitude also goes to our co-organizer, the Asia Pacific Center of Education for International Understanding. This forum comes at a momentous time as the world considers how learning can contribute, really contribute to rebuilding after crisis, just as f uh, 75 years ago. Let's make it this a turning point in history for transforming the world through in through education thank you very much thank you very much miss Gianni. Giannini uh, now i would like to invite the honorable mr yu eun he deputy prime minister and minister of education republic of korea to pronounce her welcoming remarks 안녕하세요. 대한민국 부총리 겸 교육부 장관입니다. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Eunhye Yoon. I am delighted that the 5th UNESCO Forum on Transformative Education for Sustainable Development, Global Citizenship, Health and Wellbeing is being held here in Korea. First, I would like to thank UNESCO's Assistant Secretary General of Education, Ms. Janini, for her warm welcoming remarks. I would also like to extend my gratitude and welcome to all of you for joining today's forum. Most of all, I want to express my special thank you to UNESCO headquarters and director Im Hyun Muk at APSEU for their dedication and hard work to host this event.
At the World Education Forum 2015 held in Incheon, Korea has taken a leading role in setting agendas and goals for the global community to be achieved by 2030 for sustainable development in education and has spared no effort in creating an inclusive educational environment that leaves no one behind from their early childhood to adult lives. We have particularly devoted our attention and efforts to ensure that the education for sustainable development and global citizenship education, which fall under the sustainable development goals target 4.7, are well established and implemented in the field of education. This forum is a significant event because it provides us with an opportunity to share our efforts and progress in promoting ESD and GCED, as well as discuss future directions together. Today, the global community faces diverse challenges that require global and concerted action, such as climate change, discrimination, human rights abuse, and violent extremism. Over the past two years, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused mutual disconnection and learning loss problems and has exacerbated hatred and discrimination attributed to race, nationality, religion, gender identity, and so on. Against this backdrop, education should play the role of building peace in the minds of men and women of future generations and nurturing mature citizens with a sense of responsibility towards the global challenges we are facing today. Education for mature citizens should be committed to fostering a sense of respect and sympathy towards others and an ability to act for tackling social problems. This is precisely why we should turn our eyes to education for sustainable development that respects both future and present, present generations. Global citizenship education aimed at cultivating universal human values and transformative education to promote learner-centered education that leads to actual action. The Ministry of Education of the Republic of Korea to this end strives to lay down the educational foundation for our children to grow into mature citizens with an interest and ability to act towards global issues. The Ministry has supported the Korea National Commission for UNESCO Certification of Education for Sustainable Development, currently operated in government agencies, schools, and has helped the APSEU lead the spread of GCED. And these are just some of the examples demonstrating the efforts thus far. Considerable effort is being made not only in Korea, but also in other countries across the world to create an environment where our children can grow into mature citizens. I hope this forum where we will discuss the implementation of transformative education, where do we stand for three days from today, will present us with a golden opportunity to share the role and achievements and experiences and visions of education that aims to solve common issues facing the world today and transform the global community into a better place. Wishing the forum a great success, I sincerely hope that we will soon overcome the COVID-19 pandemic and meet each other in person next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Honorable Miss Yu, the Deputy Prime Minister. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Kyun Jong Ho from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Republic of Korea, for his welcoming remarks. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the fifth UNESCO Forum on Transformative Education for Sustainable Development, Global Citizenship, Health and Wellbeing. I would like to extend my special thanks to the UNESCO Secretariat and UNESCO Asia Pacific Center of Education for International Understanding for all the excellent preparation and arrangement for this meaningful event. It has been six years since the World Education Forum 2015 was held here in the Republic of Korea. During the forum, global citizen education was set as important international agenda for the first time. 
And with the benefit of the genuine and heartfelt effort of all of us, Sustainable Development Goal Target 4.7 was adopted in UN General, General Assembly. While least we have faced many challenges during the, those six years, the last two years have been particularly challenging. The unprecedented uh, pandemic has placed a huge strain on our socio-economic system. Borders have closed. Education has been disrupted. And there have been greater tensions between various segments of society. Ironically, uh, these far-reaching uh, consequences of the pandemic have brought into focus the significance of global citizenship and transformative education as a critical means to bridge those gaps. The, Repub the Republic of Korea recognized the importance of global citizenship education at early stage and has continued continued in its effort to realize SDG target 4.7. In fact, Korea has held Global Citizenship Education Conference every year since 2016. And it launches together with other like-minded countries, the Group of Friends for Solidarity and Inclusion with Global Citizenship Education in UNESCO in May 2020 with a view to taking uh, concrete action the korean government jointly held a global forum against racism and discrimination with unesco in march 2021 as we are all aware sdg target 4.7 cannot be achieved by the effort of any single country this is a goal which can only be achieved through consulted effort to make this possible, UNESCO should present a clear vision and continue to create opportunities to share their practices. And this forum is one valued instance. Against this backdrop, the Republic of Korea welcomes the concept of transformative education. We embrace it as a new vision set by UNESCO to achieve SDG target 4.7, and it is the sincere hope of Korea that this forum may prove a chance to gain a clear picture of what transformative education means in practice. Moreover, each country should implement transformative education at the national level and share their practices at the international level. By sharing good practices, we can create a synergy. As we are emphasize what has worked for us, others can learn from this and muster even more impetus. In this way, mutually beneficial uh, momentum can be generated. In this regard, Korea is indeed ready and willing to fully share its good practices with the international community. Ladies and gentlemen, Nancy Mandela said, Education is the most powerful weapon to change the world. Through education, we can deepen the sense of global citizenship and in doing so, truly transform the world for the better. I believe that this forum will prove to be the opportunity to reflect on how far we have succeeded in bringing change in our world and a wonderful occasion to share our thought and insight on how we can move even further ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kyun. Um, and I now have the pleasure to invite Mr. Hyun Mok Lim, director of APCU, our co-organizer, to deliver his opening remarks. Thank you. Distinguished participants, colleagues, and friends. Greetings from Seoul, Korea. It is my great pleasure to open with you today the fifth UNESCO Forum on Transformative Education for, Internet, uh, for Sustainable Development, Global Citizenship, Health and Well-being. 
On behalf of APSEU, Asia Pacific Center of Education for International Understanding, I would first like to thank you all for joining us for this forum and particularly thank UNESCO Assistant Director General Stefania Giannini, Deputy Prime Minister Yu Eunhye, and Director General Gyeon Jong Ho for their encouraging opening remarks. Dear participants, APSEU has the great privilege to co-organize this forum together with UNESCO. APSEU is a UNESCO center established on open the agreement between UNESCO and the government of Korea to contribute to the advancement of global citizenship education, GCED, and education for international understanding. Over the last two decades, APSEU has worked with ed educators, teachers, education policymakers, researchers, practitioners, and youth to strengthen teachers' capacity for GCED, develop GCED policy and materials, and facilitate exchange and cooperation. Since GCED and ESD were included in SDG 4.7, as an important educational content in 2015. There have been increased efforts by the international community to mainstream them in the national curriculum, education policy, teacher training, and evaluation. Unlike other traditional subjects, however, ESD and GSD, GCED are rather difficult to monitor in their progress and evaluate in their learning outcomes. I think there are several challenges here. Firstly, ESD and GS GCED place strong emphasis on changes in learners' values, emotional capacity, and behaviors, along with acquisition of knowledge and skills. But learning outcomes in these non-cognitive dimensions are not easily captured by standardized written tests. Secondly, there is, some, there is still some conceptual vagueness or confusion about ESD and GCD. On ESD, some people still tend to focus on the environmental dimension. On GCD, many people still raise the question about this conceptual clarity. Thirdly, there is a more fundamental question. To what extent ESD and GCD can and should be transformative? And what is the exact meaning of transformative? Are we talking about attitudinal and behavioral changes in individual citizens? or systemic and structural changes. Certainly, there are many other issues with regard to transformative education in general and its monitoring and evaluation in particular. So I expect this forum will be a good opportunity for us to reflect on some of these issues and build a consensus about ways to move forward Dear participants, thank you again for joining this forum and look forward to meaningful discussions for the next three days. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Lim. Before closing the opening session, let us share a couple of useful information for making your participation more interactive and engaging. First, we built the chat box available next to the live session screen. We highly encourage you to use this space to share your comments and questions. In addition to the chat box, some sessions will use interactive tools such as Slido. So please follow the instruction at each session. 
And we've also prepared a discussion board embedded in the platform. Uh, there we will share all the session reports every day for, for your consultation. And you can also make uh, comments using this function. Uh, please also enjoy the exhibition where you will find interesting and innovative projects presented by a number of partner organizations. And finally, please do not forget to visit the networking function on the platform so you can meet other participants and exchange messages. Now, this is the end of the opening session. And please stay with us for the next session. And the next session is a moderated conversa conversation on transformative education, moderated by Eric Felt, the director of the UNESCO office in New Delhi. And what remains for me is to thank everyone and hand over to Eric Felt for his moderation. Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, a warm welcome to all of you for this conversation on transformative uh, education. My name is uh, A warm welcome to uh, all of you for the conversation on transformative education. Uh, my name is uh, Eric Falk. I'm the director of the UNESCO New Delhi office, and I have the pleasure to moderate this uh, session to kick off the discussion over the coming three days. The purpose of uh, this particular session is to look into uh, the concept of transformative education and uh, try to look at it from both a conceptual and a practical dimension. I'm here uh, today with our two guest speakers who will share with us their views on the transformative power of education. Let me first uh, introduce uh, them. And uh, first, uh, we have Mr. Nepo Museno Malaluan. He is uh, Under Secretary of the Department of Education of the Philippines. As such, he, he looks after the interagency support unit of the cabinet where education directives are coordinated. Among uh, many other responsibilities, his office currently implements an education futures program. They also uh, monitor the implementation of the top priorities of the secretary, such as learning continuity in times of COVID. Our second speaker, Dr. Amr Abdullah, is uh, Emeritus Professor at the University of Peace in uh, Egypt. Dr. Abdullah is also the senior advisor on conflict resolution at Karama, Muslim Women Lawyers for Human Rights. For over 25 years, he has been teaching graduate classes, conducting training, evaluation and research in uh, conflict analysis and resolution and peace building worldwide. I'm going to actually start uh, with Professor uh, Abdullah. I believe uh, he's joining us today from uh, the United States. Uh, Professor Abdullah, you have a long standing uh, experience in teaching young people on conflict resolution. So, in uh, discussing the transformative role of uh, education, what do you think education should or can change in our contemporary world? Thank you, Mr. Fault, and greetings to everyone. Um, in terms of education and the transformative education, let me address this and how it can change. Uh, I will address this from two perspectives. One is what needs to be changed about education itself? And second, what can this education change in society? In terms, uh, in both, to respond to both elements actually i think the heart of all those issues is critical thinking because when we say transformative by default we mean that there is something that requires change as such we need to have clear uh, understanding of what are the issues that we believe require or deserve transformation in this regard education itself in terms of pedagogy, in terms of content, uh, requires a good careful look at what it provides to young people and how it delivers this. Mm -hmm. Things are changing rapidly in this world. And uh, perhaps those among us who 
are actively engaged in teaching students every day uh, know that uh, the realities of today and how we teach and what we teach uh, require a careful look. And I think COVID-19 and what it did to all of us have forced us in, into uh, discovering, exploring and sharpening skills in areas of education and delivery and pedagogy that we have never thought we'll ever have to do. Good example, uh, often now when I teach my courses, we do the hybrid model where I have students sitting in front of me and another set of students are enjoying life from everywhere in the world and having to uh, coordinate this and to make sure that you deliver the same quality of education to those sitting in front of you and those who are watching and to engage them and make sure that uh, principles of transformative education in terms of interactiveness, participation, engagement are taking place is quite a challenge indeed, but it's not impossible. And I think we all see that we can learn a lot from such experiences. Yet with COVID or without COVID, I believe that uh, uh, those hybrid models and um, online-based education uh, is gonna stay with us for a long time. And therefore we need to learn how to incorporate this and to uh, put it to the service of uh, transformative education. In terms of the content of edu transformative education, uh, again, based on uh, critical thinking, uh, there are topics that uh, traditionally have not been in, uh, included in the curricula or in terms of what we think that the school, the, uh, school especially or university should do. Um, particularly, um, we are too focused on uh, the student-centered approach that is looking at the student as the only a recipient of knowledge uh, when actually the wider community is also a recipient of knowledge and uh, our education should engage the community and make sure that they too uh, are part of this whether in terms of supporting a student or in terms of them being a direct recipient in terms of what the education itself can do and how it can change uh, matters in our society uh, there are actually uh, many dimensions to this. I will focus now on one and I will come back to it later. And uh, which is uh, with all the important uh, dimensions of uh, transformative education that uh, can bring a positive effect to areas such as inclusiveness, uh, appreciation of diversity, ability to resolve conflicts effectively, peaceful coexistence, uh, better dealing with the environment. Uh, all those are expected outcomes of transformative education. But there is one element that I believe we must add to all of them, which is that uh, when we talk about how to better deal with environment, how to better be inclusive and to appreciate diversity and to live peacefully with everyone around you, actually all this is you do it because it's in your own best interest as an individual or as a community. It's not just about idealism and romanticism of such wonderful ideas, but it's also because it will bring the good to you personally and will bring good to you as a community. I believe that adding this dimension of what is the benefit to individuals and to communities from transformative education can actually make it more uh, sellable uh, to different societies and to make the concept actually uh, more appealing uh, in different settings. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor uh, Abdallah. Interesting to hear all your views on uh, transformative uh, uh, education. And uh, of course, I will now uh, turn to uh, Undersecretary Malaluan, uh, the Philippines is uh, clearly one of the champion countries promoting uh, transformative education with the aim to make uh, learners uh, global citizens and uh, caring for a sustainable and, and healthy future. So uh, following your country's uh, continuous efforts to uh, reform and consolidate your education system, I would like to know if you've uh, come to see any uh, behavioral changes among the teachers, but also uh, learners, uh, the parents, as you intended. Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Eric. Uh, 
Good uh, morning to all and good evening from the Philippines. Uh, transformative education uh, really starts with vision, uh, mindset, uh, planning, and uh, socialization and operationalization. Uh, for long, uh, the focus of Philippine education has been mainly towards uh, access. But under the present term of uh, Secretary Briones, we have placed quality as the biggest challenge that we need to address. But as you know, quality is a very dynamic standard and it uh, evolves with the challenges of the time. And I agree with uh, Professor Abdallah that uh, critical thinking, the sense of interconnectedness with the environment of the people, and I add the problem solving, uh, desirable skills and uh, and durable skills and multiliteracies uh, to allow learners to thrive in crisis situations, such as what we are having, and to anticipate as well opportunities arising from movements in technology, all need to be at the center of uh, teaching and learning. And, but this really requires uh, on the education uh, governance side, uh, thoroughgoing reforms. And prior to COVID, we have launched in the Philippines a program we call Sulong Itapalidad, or Onward Education Quality. And it uh, comprises the pillars of curriculum review, uh, mm -hmm. continuous and improvement of the learning environment, teachers upskilling and rescaling, and partnerships. But of these pillars, we believe that teachers and school leadership is most uh, critical, and we have been transforming our National Educators Academy, for example, uh, which is our unit responsible for in-service professional development uh, of our teachers and school leaders in terms of its organizational capacity, program uh, integration, upgrade of training facilities, and expanded scholarships, including for full graduate degrees. But to your question on whether these reforms are generating the desired uh, behavior change among our stakeholders, particularly, for example, teachers and ultimately the learners. As we capacitate our teachers and school leaders, we empower really the field uh, units to contextualize our policy direction. And we have seen vibrant innovation on the ground in terms of uh, school leadership and uh, teaching and learning strategies. For example, in uh, remote schools catering to indigenous learners, one of our divisions deployed offline uh, a local area network to provide learners with a digital learning environment, even in the absence of connectivity infrastructure in the area. And I've seen in the eyes of the students, their sense of empowerment, being able to access and use technology like their better resource counterparts in the cities. We have had in the Global Teacher Prize from the Philippines uh, at least two finalists in recent years. And our 2018 finalists, for example, used culture-based teaching, promoting learning through traditional dances, songs, epics, local games, and crafts that give context to their uh, studies. And quoting from him, he says, uh, I love teaching because it is an opportunity to touch, transform, and empower uh, my indigenous students who are deprived and less privileged, yet they are very determined to reach their dreams through education to become productive members of the community, of the country, and of the world. So in summary, what we are trying to do is uh, we want to see our reforms translating into the empowerment of our teachers and ultimately uh, transforming it to the empowerment of our learners. We want to see them oriented towards finding solutions that mitigate particularly inequality and providing a learning environment that uh, promotes the flourishing of our learners. Eric. Thank you. And that's all uh, extremely um, encouraging to, to hear. But do you think, uh, Under Secretary Malalwan, that uh, perhaps there could still be changes in the um, education system of your country? Uh, uh, certainly, the, the standard of quality is ever evolving and dynamic. Uh, for example, in uh, COVID-19, it has proved to be a double-edged sword for education. Uh, on the one hand, it has disrupted education operation and imposed considerable stress on all 
organizational infrastructure and human components of the system. And there's now a need to deal with learning recovery as we transition back to whatever the new normal holds for us. But we should also not turn a blind eye to the learning gains that COVID uh, triggered, such as the recovery of household involvement in learning, the support of uh, local government units and uh, innovations on learning uh, resources and learning delivery, as uh, Professor Abdallah mentioned, and uh, learning assessment as well. And uh, these are also uh, uh, vibrantly happening on the ground. But what I think, and to your question of what else are, are there to transform, uh, I believe that uh, COVID has really compelled us to look again at the broader learning ecosystem beyond the confines of physical classrooms. Learning spaces are habitats. Uh, we can regard learning spaces are habitats for learners, where learners learn and become adaptive in order to thrive. And uh, this emphasizes the shared responsibility of stakeholders in a learning ecosystem. While uh, traditionally the education sector, particularly formal education has a pervasive role in ensuring that learners develop multiple literacies. Uh, it is not its sole, uh, the sole institution that is responsible. It is important to acknowledge that the people, the communities, and the institutions in the everyday lives of our learners impact on who they grow up to be. And thus, uh, in the Philippines, uh, our Education Futures program, program that you mentioned in your introduction, uh, we are embarking on a co-creation process with various stakeholders for an integrated concept or design of future learning spaces. And this cooperation project involves the convening of a multidisciplinary design team to develop configurations of integrated learning spaces, the conduct of uh, roundtable discussions to tackle key aspects, opportunities, uh, challenges, and strategies, and solutions for the future learning spaces, we are making an open call for submission of studies on future learning spaces as part of the cooperation and knowledge building process. But we are also looking and identifying at already existing best practices to unlock, to connect, to replicate and scale future learning spaces and create system level uh, change for transformative education. So Eric, that's uh, a dimension uh, that we would want to develop for transformative education, being able to harness and uh, access and leverage uh, all learners' habitats outside or beyond uh, the confines of the physical formal education spaces. Eric. Back to you, uh, Professor uh, Abdallah. I know you have very uh, strong views on on how to uh, uh, transform oneself and then uh, society. So would you please care to uh, elaborate a little bit? I will say that uh, this is due to uh, the direct experience of working with uh, many people worldwide, uh, not only in terms of uh, the formal uh, type of education in a university setting or a school setting, but also working in communities, especially in post-conflict uh, communities and societies. Uh, I have seen uh, the benefit uh, of uh, transformative education and, uh, uh, and training and all the other models that we use, especially when we go into uh, non-formal education settings, on how it impacts people, as you said, the self first, and then and how it can impact uh, the wider communities. Let me uh, give you two direct examples on this. Uh, in terms of the self uh, effect, um, I, I had a very interesting experience a few days ago, actually, with one of my uh, students who actually attended uh, an online course I teach about introduction to peace and conflict uh, at University for Peace uh, over a year ago. And then I met her finally face to face in Costa Rica at UPs uh, just a few days ago. And she said, you know, I have to tell you that that course that, that I took from you uh, took away my fighting spirit. And I said, what do you mean by this? And she said, I used to be a real activist and I just want to go and I believe in my cause and I go and fight so hard for it. 
But by learning about conflict resolution and conflict analysis, I found that I need to hold back first and assess and understand maybe there is a different point of view of the other side. How can I reach out to them in a more appealing way, not just in a, in a confrontational way? So in a way, she was like, quote unquote, blaming me for taking away her fighting spirit. But that was in such a positive way in terms of how now she has a better way of dealing with conflicts and confrontations in a more positive, peaceful way. For me, this is a kind of transformation that happens uh, on, on a very personal level uh, that can happen only if we are using the proper techniques that can make what we do resonate with people in their heart and mind. I have another example of also the benefit of participatory education and opening the space for people to share. And uh, even uh, to the point that we bring about issues that may not be as comfortable for all of us, yet they are also uh, transformative on a very deep level. Uh, back again to my experience teaching in, uh, at University for Peace, one time I had a seminar discussing nonviolence. And as you can imagine, the students who are coming to study in a place like University for Peace, they are the converted already. They already believe in nonviolence, believe in all those uh, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and so on. So I, we were talking about the issue of nonviolence and examples of nonviolence. And the students were just going all the way, giving great examples and asserting that nonviolence is the way to address conflicts uh, in any place and under any condition. Great, I was expecting this. However, one young woman in the group uh, was quiet all throughout the seminar. At the end, she raised her hand and she said, I know what you're saying about nonviolence. I really believe in it like you do. But I also want to tell you that when I was 14 years old, I was sexually assaulted by two men. In retrospect, I wished I used violence to stop what happened to me. And she started to cry. That experience happened 10 years ago. I still repeat that story because I saw the effect of that story on everyone in that room and on in every room that I share that story with because it helps people to get to the point that myself and uh, His Excellency mentioned, critical thinking. How can we even think of the concept that we dearly uphold such as nonviolence? And how can we make sense of it at the same time make sense of the experience of this young woman? How can we insist on nonviolence at the same time embrace this young woman and her experience? For me, it is that level of deep critical thinking that we need and we can achieve through transformative education. Another dimension is about uh, the effect on communities, especially in post-conflict settings. And uh, here too, I, this is where I insist on that concept of what is the benefit, what's in it for me? I know that doesn't sound as idealistic as we like to talk about issues of transformative education, but at the same time, I believe that this is critical to the extent that we can get more people to find that it's in their interest to use alternatives to violence, alternatives to non-peaceful coexistence, alternatives to refusing diversity. And when they realize that actually by embracing diversity and peaceful coexistence and the peaceful resolution of conflict, that and embracing environment as well, that they will do better, they will actually continue on that path of transformation. And this I saw very clearly in Darfur. I went to twice with uh, a UN environment program to do evaluation of peace building and conflict resolution programs over natural resources and the environment. We all know that the area of the Sahel, including Darfur, is one of the areas that suffer so much because of climate change and the effect on natural resources and the competition between different groups that is leading to very violent conflict that uh, tend to take uh, other layers such as ethnic, religious, and, and racial, and so on. So the, I, the concept of UN environment uh, in, in that part of the world is to uh, provide support uh, for managing natural resources in a more effective way and educating people on how to uh, manage their resources effectively, uh, even though they are fin enemies and they have been for now decades fighting and killing each other. 
by giving them this alternative of how to manage your resources more effectively and then in doing so you actually get the water that you have been killing people to to get or get the uh, the forest and access to the forest that you used to go and fight people and burn it down to deprive them from they started to realize that they are actually gaining what they wanted to fight for all the way except they are doing it peacefully they don't have to go back and resort to violence Resorting to violence was intended because they were unable to achieve their basic needs or satisfy them uh, using peaceful means. If you now give them peaceful means that are satisfying their basic uh, needs and interests, then they can actually think, maybe I should not resort to violence. And then on top of it, not only that they were able to, to, to reduce violence and stop it to a great extent between groups that used to fight each other for so long, but they also found that because those different groups learned how to cooperate, how to coexist together, and how to actually achieve their own self-interest mutually, they started now to think of a future, start to think beyond the immediate present, and to start to cooperate about ideas and projects that improve the quality of life for all of them. I have seen women who, through such projects and activities, started to become entrepreneurs, started to be to get a receive education and to transform not only their lives, but the lives of their families and everyone around them. I will say that uh, in making sure that as part, a big component of what we do is transformative education is to highlight the benefit to people and how they will gain something on a personal level and on a community level uh, is something that I think it can enrich our approaches and how we can actually implement transformative education. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Abdullah. We both are, uh, you, you both explained uh, uh, very well your, your perspective on transformative education. Uh, we have some time uh, because we started uh, early. So we have a few more minutes if you would like to uh, uh, offer words of uh, conclusion. Uh, and I will start with you, uh, Under Secretary uh, Malalwan. Obviously, uh, you're trying, uh, uh, you look, you've explained uh, transformative education from the perspective of the Philippines, but globally, uh, do you have uh, any uh, suggestions for, uh, uh, for everyone, for all other countries? Well, uh, I, I, I'd like to take off from my uh, comment about uh, broadening the uh, learning ecosystem beyond the confines of the physical classroom, and this is uh, to recognize that all of us uh, really have a contribution to the uh, teaching and learning uh, process of our children uh, nationally and around the world. And so that includes uh, all our, globally, our uh, contribution to uh, in various institutions, be it, uh, for example, the mass media or whether it's news and entertainment, uh, the direction of the education and system around the world, the equity of uh, uh, use of resources, uh, all of these are interconnected towards, uh, towards education. And the idea is that uh, it is a shared responsibility. Uh, and it is a shared responsibility that goes beyond borders. Uh, so uh, I think uh, that is... Uh, a, you know, if we're talking about transformative education, it is not to skill our teachers, but society as a whole. Uh, thank you, Ed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Professor Abdullah, you have a chance to uh, conclude. Uh, what would these uh, words of conclusion be? Okay. Uh, staying with uh, my uh, uh, approach, which is to try to bring some real life examples and uh, to demonstrate the effectiveness of uh, transformative education. Uh, I would like also to highlight another uh, very successful experience uh, that we, I have uh, had the honor to work with, especially in Iraq. Um, and uh, before I get there, I have to say that uh, there is an appetite for transformative education worldwide. Uh, I think it's not difficult to sell the concept. It's not difficult to get people to appreciate the benefit uh, of transformative education. And I have seen that evidently uh, from the research we've done in the Arab world in general and from the practice of uh, opening programs of peace and conflict resolution 
at a master's degree level and other uh, uh, in formal settings and non-formal settings in especially in Iraq. Uh, it is really uh, uh, really encouraging to see that uh, young people and old people, uh, university professors and uh, and youth, all of them uh, are very receptive to the concept of learning about uh, the principles of what we call transformative education. And perhaps one of the great things about transformative education is, I mean, yes, in some settings you go out and say, I am, I am going to talk about transformative education today, or I'm going to teach transformative education. But uh, in other places, we don't exactly say that. But we say we're going to teach about uh, diversity. We're going to teach about environment. We're going to teach about conflict resolution. So there are many topics that fall under the great banner, wide banner of uh, transformative education uh, and, uh, and also how to do the teaching itself. In this regard, I found that uh, the topic and the delivery of, uh, uh, of what, subjects such as conflict resolution and uh, peacemaking and so on are actually very well received uh, in everywhere we go in the world. And I go back again to the uh, principle of people realize the effect directly that happens to them. It's amazing to see the transformation happening in front of you uh, and to see that people are actually absorbing uh, what we are delivering in terms of transformative education as it relates to certain topics of importance for them. Uh, skills and knowledge and uh, psychological and behavior change that happen uh, because people are, are thirsty for those skills and knowledge that transform transformative education offers because it improves their life. It provides alternatives to what they are used to. And, uh, and many of them become advocates for what we offer for them through transformative education. Uh, and therefore, I believe that by looking at some of those uh, uh, bright examples, uh, whether in the Middle East, in Asia, Africa, the Americas, Europe, anywhere, uh, you will find that there are actually effective examples and maybe that goes to a point what was made in the uh, opening session about the need for evaluation and to assess the effectiveness and the impact. Uh, I think with careful evaluation, we can actually extract some very good examples uh, and lessons learned that can be replicable uh, in more places worldwide. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Abdullah, for your very uh, inspiring uh, conclusion. Uh, this will uh, bring an end to uh, this first conversation uh, today. I hope the um, audience has had some uh, food for thought for, to continue the, the discussion on uh, transformative education in, in different sessions from uh, probably more specific uh, angles. I would uh, like to thank uh, very much our two speakers uh, uh, today who were uh, speaking to us from uh, the Philippines and uh, the United States. Thank you uh, very much. And now I invite all of you to please stay connected for Plenary One, which will uh, discuss practices at the country level more in detail. This was uh, Eric Falt signing off from New Delhi, India. Thank you. Thank you.